recently a fairly unknown Chromium fork started getting quite a bit of attention. That being the Thorium browser, which you may have heard about from a recent Chris Titus video, the best web browser. This video did incredibly well, and congrats to Chris for that. Now, this video is not going to be a reply video. It's not going to be me trashing the Thorium browser or trashing its developer, or even me just trying to shill brave. Use whatever web browser you want. But I can't in good faith give my personal recommendation for the Thorium browser. That's not to say it's bad. I just think there are some legitimate issues that need to be addressed. So we'll start with something that is fairly minor, which you might just consider a nitpick, and then go out from there. So this is the Thorium browser. Now the Thorium browser, like most Chromium forks, includes a basic rebrand. You have a new name, you have a new logo. When I say new logo, it's basically the Chromium logo, but with a black ring instead of a white ring, and you have a new theme. The new theme is basically just the Chrome theme, but dark and more blue accents. Now, the rebrand isn't entirely done. If we go into the About Thorium section, there is a link in here to get help with Thorium. Now in Chromium, this takes you to the Google documentation. So what you would expect from this is for it to take you to the Thorium documentation. If we click it, it takes you to the Google Chrome help page. This is fine, and it will explain most of the things you need to know, but you would expect a project that is trying to do its own thing to also have its own documentation. It's not like Thorium is a one-to-one -one copy of Chromium, so there are additional things you might need to know. What I would expect here is for it to take you to a Thorium page that explains the specific Thorium things, and then for a further link from there to then take you out to additional things that are generic about Chromium. But from what I can see right now, there doesn't really seem to be any specific Thorium documentation. There is a little bit of stuff on the website. There is a little bit of stuff about things that have changed in the README, but no actual compiled together documentation section. Now, one of the additional changes made to Thorium is by default enabling something called do not track, which on the tin sounds like a really good idea, but in reality is kind of this weird and failed HTTP header experiment. So the idea is a new field would be added to the header that would tell a website, hey, do not track me. I do not want to be tracked. And in a perfect world, this would be great. We don't live in a perfect world though. So a lot of websites out there simply do not respect this field whatsoever, PayPal being a good example, and if it's there, they're just like, what is do not track? I do not know what this header field means, and just entirely ignore it. That's the good websites. The bad websites are the ones that use the fact that you say do not track as a part of the thing to use to fingerprint you, because so few users actually make use of do not track that by enabling it, you put yourself into a smaller group that makes you easier to identify. There is zero consensus over how this should be handled, basically zero regulation and basically zero punishment for a service not respecting do not track. Now there is a bit of work being done in the EU, specifically in Germany with a recent court case, but nothing at this stage has really been set in stone. So if you expect to enable do not track and then suddenly stop getting targeted ads, do not track at the best of times is useless, at the worst of times is actively harmful. Thanks to Brave enabling do not track by default, there is a lot more people making use of it, so the cohort of users is quite a bit larger and it's much less of a fingerprinting element. But the rest of the stuff, it doesn't really help with. As for things that haven't changed, Thorium is not ungoogled. You have things like Google Sync support. If we go to a new tab, there's Google search here. The first time you open Thorium, it is going to prompt you to log into a Google account if you would like to do so. This is not ungoogled Chromium. Now to be fair, it does not advertise itself as ungoogled. And me personally, I don't really care about it being ungoogled. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but I make use of Google Maps. I will sometimes use Google search. For me, I typically 
avoid Google services, but like I'm a YouTuber, so like I'm on Google services literally every day. Um, so it would be pretty hard to fully avoid them. But I know there are some people out there that have no interest in using a browser that has these Google services available. They still want to use Chromium, but don't want the rest of the Google stuff. I understand that. And for users like you, this browser is never going to be what you want. Now let's talk about how you install Thorium. I currently have the AUR package installed because packages and package managers are nice and convenient. When there is an update, I say, package manager, install the package. And it installs the package. If you're not on Arch though, your options are a little bit more limited. Whilst there is a copper repo for it, there is no description, no installation instructions, there is no indication if this actually works, if it's actually being maintained, because also it's not for the bin, um, this is for the git. So, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Copper is an absolute mess. I know the AUR package does work though, so the better option for everybody else is the manual installation method. Either the RPM, the deb, or the app image. Just this by itself is reason enough for me to say, avoid Thorium at least for now. You don't want to use a web browser that is a pain to update, because if it's a pain to update, you're never going to update it, and your browser is something you want to make sure is always up to date. Now, I think one of two things need to be done here. Either one, have some form of automatic update system where the user just doesn't need to think about it, or two, get it into at least some form of third-party repos. Things like a PPA for Ubuntu, maybe an official Fedora repo. There's already an AUR package, so pretty much good to go there. Actually, there's an AUR package for basically every version of it you could possibly want. And maybe even try to get it onto Flathub as well. Make it so it is easy to install and easy to update. However, I do understand why issues like this exist. Whilst there are some other contributors on the project, right now being a total of nine of them, Alex is by far the major contributor on the project, with a couple of commits here and there being made by other people. Right here, if we go to the next page, we'll see a couple of more, but really, Alex is the main driving force behind the project, and this is totally normal on a FOSS project. Most FOSS projects are run like this, but I wouldn't use a browser like this. Now, to be entirely fair, there are a couple of other contributors that aren't being counted as part of the main set of contributors. I don't entirely know why, but they are involved in making things like the packages. It's not every single package, but you will see a couple of recurring names in here, at least. Okay, there we go. Not every single one, but they are recurring. Now, I'm not particularly concerned about Alex becoming this malicious user and stealing all your data. Obviously, that could very well happen with basically a single developer working on the project, but it's not a major concern. My main concern is the fact that Thorium is attached to his personal account. So if he ever decides, oh, I don't know, I'm bored. I don't really feel like working on the project anymore. Maybe something bad happens, like he has some health issues, or even worse than that. At any point in time, Thorium could just completely stop. But here's the best part. It's not like you need to wait for the project to be abandoned to be running an out-of-date version of Chromium. So the current latest version is based on Chromium 117. If we look at Thorium over here, that is the version I'm running over here. Okay, is this the latest version of Chromium? Well, 117 hit stable release on September 12th, 2023. 118 hit stable release October 10th, 2023. And as of recording, 119 has just hit stable release in the Chrome browser. So 119 is now the current stable version. Now, it's not like when the major number is incremented, the old version just stopped getting patches altogether. There are still going to be security patches and minor patches being made. The problem is this is the specific version that Thorium is based on. This was released last month. It doesn't actually have a proper date here, but last month. 
that's kind of a problem for a browser. You don't want to be running a Chromium base this old. I totally understand why it's based on a version this old. Tracking Chromium changes, making sure your browser is up to date is a lot of work. That's why there is a lot of people that work on Chromium based browsers, whether it's Brave or Opridge or anything else out there. It's a lot of work. But even though I understand why it's like this, if the developer wants to run it personally, go ahead. It's his system. Do whatever you want. But I cannot recommend that anybody runs a version of Chromium that is over a month out of date. Now, we also need to talk about a recent hot topic, that being Adblock. Now, Thorium does rather nicely actually ship something with it. So if we go into our extensions, it by default ships uBlock Origin. Awesome. That's great. What happens when Chromium actually does get rid of Manifest V2, which is what uBlock Origin relies on to actually have ad blocking, content blocking, whatever term you want to use, actually work properly? At that point, Manifest V3 is the only thing that is going to be available. Well, Thorium is not going to have a properly working ad blocker. It doesn't have built in ad block like things like Vivaldi, like Brave. It's going to rely on whatever Chromium provides. And when that happens, a lot of the performance benefits that Thorium is currently getting are going to go right out the window. Now, Google has temporarily put the brakes on the MV3 migration because Google forgot to migrate their own plugins. But my understanding is it is still going to happen at some point in the future. But now we're not really sure on when. Now that is the bad, and I don't want it to seem like Thorium is entirely terrible, and there's no reason to ever run it. A lot of these problems are fixable, and if they are fixed, I'm more than happy to recommend it, because they do have some additional changes which are pretty nice. Things like enabling JPEG Excel by default. Things like having DNS over HTTPS. Disabling the federated learning of cohorts patch. Adds DuckDuckGo, Brave Search, Ecosia, Ask.com, and Yandex in the US and other locales, along with the normal search engines. Having support for Widevine, which is not a guarantee with these random Chromium forks. GTK Auto Dark Mode patch. Like, all of these things are really great to see. And of course, the optimization stuff done with changing out some compiler flags. All of this stuff is great and deserves praise for. But in its current state... I cannot recommend that anybody use Thorium. Now, Alex, I have sent you an email. If you would like to talk about it, if you think that I've said anything completely wrong, please do reach out to me. I'm more than happy to have a discussion with you. If you'd like to do the podcast, I would love that as well. That would be awesome. But as it stands, this is my opinion on the browser. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you like the Thorium browser? Do you think I'm completely wrong? And not just, you're wrong, you're stupid. Actually give me a reason why. I would love to know. For anyone else, let me know what browser you are using. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Thorium is a pretty cool element. Yeah.